Hello, my name is Glenn Arnold. I'm a field specialist. I work with Manure Nutrient Management Systems for the Ohio State University Extension. Today we're going to spend some time talking about poultry litter. Ohio is the second largest egg producing state in the United States. We uh, trail only Iowa. We have two types of poultry that make up the majority. Number one is laying hens. And the second largest is probably turkeys. But we also have broilers, we have poults, we have other uh, um, poultry, but turkeys and laying hens would be our biggest two sources of uh, poultry manure. This is a traditional way in the older building designs where poultry litter was stored in the basement. And basically it could be emptied at any time of the year when, soil con when field conditions were fit. Uh, for manure application to occur. More modern buildings, and you can see in this one the uh, conveyor belts taking out the eggs. When you look at this, this is really the same method that the manure leaves the building. Obviously not in the same conveyor belt, but beneath each of the pens there are small belts that take the manure out. And they'll take that out sometimes once a day, sometimes twice a day. Depends a bit on the size of the birds and how, how much production they have with that. But the manure is transferred into this building. And this one's still under construction. But these are cavernous buildings. And their, their reason for existing is to store poultry litter so that it can be land applied at a suitable time. And these things are built off the ground so it's easy to load them or load the manure from them when the time comes. And this one you can see is uh, in operation. These are long litters or long um, um, windrows of poultry litter. And on the top of this um, building, you can see these orange conveyor belts. And there's a trickle of manure coming off the conveyor belt directly in the center of your picture. And these will run quite a bit, and they'll slowly but surely fill these buildings full of poultry litter. When the time comes, these buildings are full. The poultry litter is going to go be uh, land applied. They're going to find a place to put that, and so they can load that in semis. I know when I was younger, I was really surprised to learn how much poultry litter in Ohio can travel um, over 100 miles from its source of production. Because it's not nearly as uh, liquid as dairy manure and swine manure, it's much more economical to put on semis and haul greater distances. Usually, when they um, reach a field, the poultry litter is um, stacked for later application. There's quite a few rules that go along with this. There have to be certain setback distances from house. Uh, can't be in floodplain. There has to be uh, um, inspections once a week for fly control purposes. Uh, we can't have too much slope to where these poultry litters are placed. But because we have a lot of manure and it has to be applied at some point, um, we also will have a lot of poultry litter stacked during the growing season. So this is an example of a stack of poultry litter that was placed in Dark County in um, late August when the soybeans were still green. And they just simply back into the field and they pick a spot and they make their stack. So again, uh, time is a factor here. So when soil conditions are suitable, conditions are right to get this manure out into the fields, they'll, they'll go forth and get that done. Now poultry litter can be analyzed just like soil can be analyzed, just like liquid manures can be analyzed. And this is just an example of a poultry anal analysis that came back. Now this is uh, what we consider to be a dry form of manure, so the nutrient analysis is listed in pounds per ton. And liquid samples that uh, we deal with, with swine and dairy, uh, usually it's pounds in a thousand gallons of liquid manure. But for purposes here with uh, what we're doing, it's pounds per ton. And you can see in that first row going across there, the moisture and the percent. This was about 50.80% moisture. So it tells you that, um, um, you know, it's in a more of a dry form than what we handle our liquid manures. 
As you look down through some of the other numbers down through there, I'm going to circle the nitrogen numbers. For this sample, the total nitrogen is 58.7 pounds of total nitrogen and the ton of poultry litter. If you look at the next line down, it's going to talk the, about the ammonium form. And the ammonium form is 32.3 pounds in a ton. And if you look further to the right, there's a first year availability per ton of these nutrients. And that 32.3 pounds of ammonium nitrogen is considered all available. So it will be utilized by a crop the first year it is applied to a farm field. So if you look to the right there, all 32.3 pounds is available from this sample. And then the next line down talks about organic nitrogen. Now organic nitrogen is um, a type that has to be mineralized before it becomes available to the growing crop or to any plant that's in the field. And that mineralization process doesn't occur rapidly. But again, it does take place. Usually a little, a greater percent of that is broken down over several years. So on this example, we have 26.4 pounds of, uh, of uh, organic nitrogen in this ton of manure. And they've got 15.8 pounds being available the first year. Now that's a pretty large percent of the 26. That's over 50% of that organic nitrogen be available the first year. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that um, it's in the urea form and there's a lot uh, or a greater percentage of organic nitrogen that's going to convert to available nitrogen in a poultry litter than the organic nitrogen that we typically find in swine manure or dairy manure. So just uh, one of those things about poultry litter. The next item I'll look at is the phosphorus. If you look at phosphorus as P2O5, we have 51.2 pounds in a ton of poultry litter. And as you go further to the right, you'll see that is a, considered to be available the first year. It's not as available as rapidly as commercial poultry or commercial P2O5 that you can buy, but it will eventually become available. And uh, unless it's, uh, the field is in a deficit situation where, where P2O5 is absolutely critical, uh, poultry, poultry litter is a good source for P2O5 and, and it will become available as plants need it. Then this next number down is our potash or potassium as K2O. We have 44.7 pounds in a thousand gallons. And as we look across to the right hand side, all 44.7 pounds is considered to be available the first year for a crop. And then lastly, there's sulfur as the lowest number and a little over half of the sulfur that's in poultry litter is considered available the first year. Sulfur is something that we never really needed in our soils many years ago, but if you look at soil tests that um, dealerships will show you that uh, sulfur is something that we need to apply because it's being called for in almost all the soil tests we get back. I put some values on um, these nutrients, uh, P2O5, I've got 53 cents a pound as a value. I've got K2O, it's about 32 cents a pound. And nitrogen's worth about 47 cents a pound. So if a person's purchasing poultry litter and you're kind of curious uh, what the nutrient value is, for this sample, I've got that the P2O5 is worth about $27.60 a ton. Um, K2O is worth $14.30 a pound or ton. And then you've got your nitrogen. And also you've got organic material. Uh, we don't often value organic matter, but it is a great thing to add to a field. And there's also a lot of micronutrients in any type of manure. And again, we don't have them listed here and we don't have a value on them, but uh, they are a nice, uh, a nice addition to have. This is just another example of manure that's been stockpiled. It looks like soybean stubble field. Uh, it's going to be land applied. You'll see crews going around with um, applicators and loaders and they'll pull into a field and they'll load this poultry litter and they'll, they'll get this applied uh, all across Northwest Ohio and Western Ohio. We see it pretty commonly and also in Eastern Ohio. It's used over there. This is just a, an example of um, an applicator going across the field. It looks like soil conditions are pretty reasonable to get this done. 
Because of growing corn soybean rotation of uh, cr uh, crop sequence, you'll often run into where you use up about 100 to 120 pounds of P2O5 in a two year period of time with the crop removal from the corn and crop removal from the soybeans. And so about two tons uh, per acre of poultry litter every other year just about matches what we need for a crop rotation. So two tons per acre is a pretty common application rate. If you're only going to use poultry litter um, every three or four years, obviously a little higher rate would be suitable for that. But you can see here we are loading some additional poultry litter, putting it on our applicators to get uh, work done. And then once it's loaded, we can uh, go forth and get these. Incorporate as soon as possible. There are methods of um, measuring solid manure application, and this is one of them. You can put a tarp out. And if you put a tarp out that's 56 inches by 56 inches, um, you'll find that's about one two thousandths of an acre. So if you uh, were to put a tarp like this out, and this one was put out in a beef manure situation, and you were to then weigh this tarp, uh, then you'll find out that this one would probably weigh about eight pounds. And so one pound on a tarp that's 56 inches by 56 inches equates to um, one ton per acre. So if you have eight pounds of manure on this tarp, that's equivalent to eight tons per acre when you're doing uh, solid manure with cattle. In our poultry litter example, uh, it would be there and you could weigh it, but uh, two tons per acre is a fairly small amount to capture. As we look at future uh, thoughts on poultry litter, um, Currently, we surface apply poultry litter and then farmers work the ground to get it incorporated. And because this is often done after crops come off in the fall, uh, it's difficult to get good establishment of cover crops or something to capture that nitrogen. This is an example of a prototype that I believe came from the University of Arkansas that they brought to Ohio to our manure science review a few years ago. And this is a poultry litter injector is what they called it. So let's play that video. And this, this uh, injector basically takes solid poultry litter, um, puts it down into the soil. They have disc openers and they have disc closers. And it's a way of getting uh, poultry litter below the uh, soil surface. So uh, it'd be like a one time across the field to get that litter incorporated. Now, anyone who has spread poultry litter would uh, look at this and say that's pretty slow because we're used to uh, a widespread pattern uh, shooting across the field at uh, six eight miles an hour but we all start somewhere so it'll be interesting to see if this technology could be developed to um, work better and uh, be more of And just a reminder, 
anytime poacher litter is stacked in fields, um, there's a waste transfer sheet that's completed that's available for NRCS. And uh, this is the documentation that um, the product was put out there and when and where. And um, that way, if weather uh, prevents it from being applied in a timely fashion, we can all be aware of that. You know, if you look at the uh, 590 standards for stockpiling of manure, uh, not supposed to be stockpiled for more than six months, and, and there's several other things about that. But again, uh, weather dictates a lot of our windows for manure application. And I uh, just wanted you to be aware there is a uh, paperwork in progress behind that. And I thought the other thing we would do uh, is just to figure out how we would uh, come, come up with prices for nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash when we're trying to value manure. And so in this example, I've got 28% UAN, urea ammonium nitrate. And in my example, I've got it valued at $270 per ton. And there's approximately three pounds of nitrogen in each gallon of UAN. And each gallon is pretty dense. It weighs 10.6 pounds compared to water at being about eight and a half. So if we buy 28% uh, by the ton, 2,000 gallons of 28% uh, divided by 10.6 6 pounds in a gallon gets us about 189 gallons in a ton. If you figure there's three pounds of nitrogen in each gallon, that's about 568 pounds of nitrogen in that uh, ton of uh, UAN. And then if we put a take the value and divide it by the pounds in that form, in this situation, we paid 47 cents for each pound of nitrogen that we got. So again, just a way of uh, walking through an example like that. If we looked at a fertilizer source, you know, we've got uh, MAP and DAP are two of the, two of the most common, MAP being ammonium, or monoammonium phosphate, DAP being diammonium phosphate. Um, we're going to grab the MAP example here, and we're going to look at that a little bit. MAP fertilizer, when I priced it, when I uh, was looking at work, putting this together was $553 per ton at that time. Uh, the analysis of MAP is 11520, and again, that would be nitrogen, phosphorus, and potash. If you look at 2,000 pounds of MAP, figuring 52% of that is actual product, then that's 1,040 pounds of P2O5 that we purchased. Um, Looking at the price divided by the pounds of actual P2O5, MAP came in at 53 cents a pound. Or excuse me, P2O5 came in at 53 cents a pound. And that's a pretty common price. You know, up, usually it's going to fluctuate uh, from the mid 40s to about 50 cents a pound or so. Our ton of poultry litter that we had in our example was 51 pounds of P2O5 and a ton of that. Valuing that at 53 cents a pound if we'd have bought that commercially. That means there's $27.61 of phosphorus, as P2O5, in that ton of dairy of uh, poultry litter. If we look at the potash, uh, potash is sold as 0060. If we were to buy a ton of that and 60% was actual K2O, then that means we bought 1,200 pounds of K2O. Take the price divided by the pounds of actual product that we got. Potash comes in at about 32 cents per pound. If you look at that poultry litter example that we had earlier in this le lecture, uh, we had 44.7 pounds of K2O in a ton. So you take those 44.7 pounds times the value, 32 cents a pound for poultry litter or for the K2O and poultry litter, you get 14.30 or the value of the K2O in that ton of poultry litter. I didn't put a value on the nitrogen because um, it's hard to value nitrogen if you're not going to capture it and use it. But ultimately, our goal is to try to do as good a job as we can capturing the nutrients in all manures so that we can make sure that we're doing our part to uh, keep Lake Erie on the improvement path as much as possible. That Western Lake Erie Basin is a pretty big part of the state of Ohio. There's different rules for mineral application in different parts of the state. So you need to check with your soil and water or check with someone else uh, in authority when you uh, are looking at utilizing poultry litter. So again, you're following whatever the rules, 
rules are. So the rules in Grand Lake St. Mary's at the bottom are different than those in the Western Lake Erie Basin, and they are different from those in the um, Ohio River Basin. And with that, I'm going to conclude today's lecture. I hope that you have a pleasant day, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. larger and more efficient because when you look at it uh, poultry litter with having a fairly sizable amount of nitrogen in it if we could figure out ways to use that with crops that are growing such as wheat uh, such as uh, corn uh, might be a way to capture more of the value of poultry litter rather than just uh, being appreciative of the uh, P and the K and the organic material and micronutrients. And really, it's very difficult to hardly see poultry litter when it's been land applied. When you're doing a rate of two tons per acre and you're getting it spread out very nicely, um, it really is uh, difficult to see sitting on that soil surface. We'd like to get that.